everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I'll be showing you 10 cards that I created with the Spellbinders January 2020 card kit. I know I'm a little bit late on this kit but I still wanted to show it because it's a really pretty kit and the cards you make from it can work for numerous occasions. So you can see for card one I went ahead and embossed a sheet of white cardstock using a notebook paper embossing folder from my stash. And I just cut that in half so that I can create two cards here. Uh, in the ephemera pack, you get two of each image. So for a few of these cards, I will be making uh, duplicates. So I'm taking some of the ephemera pieces and I'm kind of just laying them out. I thought that the notebook paper embossing folder would work nicely with that ephemera piece that looks like a torn sticky note. So I'm just kind of creating a collage here. You can see both cards are a little bit different, but they both have the same idea here. I'm taking some of the sentiment banners that came in the ephemera pack, and I'm going to add them to the notebook paper. And that's going to kind of act as my sentiment for these cards. For the card on the right, I'm going to add you are made of gold. And then I think for the card on the left, I'll use a sticker. So they're a little bit different, but the same exact layout. On those tabs at the top of the notebook papers, I did add some stickers to them from the sticker pack. I chose happiness and lovely. I attached that floral image to that torn sticky note ephemera piece, and I will pop that up with some foam tape. You can see I went ahead and added that sticker. I think it says live in the moment onto that ephemera piece. And I will pop these two images up with the foam dots that came in the kit. So that will pretty much complete my two panels here. You can see on the second one I decided to tuck in some dominoes behind one of my sentiments. And I kind of like the one on the left a little bit more because of the dominoes. So I decided to map both of these onto some purple cardstock that came in the kit. I did cut these down to four and a quarter by five and a half, so they will cover the entirety of an A2 card base. And the pattern paper panels are cut to four by five and a quarter, so they're just a quarter inch smaller. I matted one on some lighter purple and then the other one on a darker purple. And then I will just add some ATG tape and attach both of those onto some card bases. All of my card bases are made with 110 pound Nina cardstock. The kit does come with some card bases, but they're a little bit flimsy. And since I sell my cards, I like to just use some heavyweight cardstock instead. So here's a close up of card one. And I love that for most of my cards, I can create duplicates. I think I made 15 cards total with this month's kit, and I could have made um, probably at least 10 more. So for card two, I'm taking a white strip of cardstock, and I'll have measurements over at my blog. And I'm just going to add some strips of gold cardstock to the sides of that white strip. And then I'll just attach that down onto a pattern paper that is cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And then I had these two floral pieces from the ephemera pack. So I'm going to use both of them on one card. So I wasn't able to duplicate this one. And then in the center of those flowers, I added the love always die cut piece. I'm going to pop everything up with some foam tape here. I'm using Uline foam tape. Um, the backing is a little bit difficult to peel off. So I'm using my scissors to help me out. So I'll just pop that up right on top of that white strip of cardstock. And then I'll trim off the tail of the E. And then I'm just going to finish this card with a few of the gems that came in the kit. And that will pretty much complete that card. This one was really fast to put together. I'm going to add some ATG tape behind this panel and attach it to a red panel, which also came in the card kit. And again, that will cover my entire A2 card base, so I'll just attach that. And that will complete card number two. Really fast and simple to put together. Here's a close-up. 
For card three, I'm taking this beautiful pattern paper. This was my favorite from the paper pack, and I'm going to die cut it with a scallop stitch rectangle die from my stash, and I'm also going to die cut a stitch rectangle from some vellum cardstock. And I'm going to have that floral pattern paper be the star of this card, I guess. I didn't want to cover up too much of it, but I will use the vellum to kind of mute down the background so that I can add my ephemera piece on top and have it stand out. You can see I went ahead and die cut um, the moment word die from some gold card stock from the kit. And that moment die did come in the die cut pack. And I'm going to combine it with a sentiment banner from the ephemera pack. I just cut off moment on that banner so that I can replace it with this moment word die. And the sentiment will read, wouldn't miss a moment. I'll attach both of those with my art glitter glue towards the bottom of my vellum stitched rectangle. And then above that, I'm going to pop up this ephemera piece. And it looks a lot like the pattern paper in the background. It has the same um, florals in it. So once that is adhered, I'll flip that vellum panel over and just add glue behind the areas with the ephemera piece and the sentiment. Um, you can see glue under vellum, so that's why I'm trying to hide it. And then I just attach that to my floral scalloped stitched rectangle panel, and then I'll attach that onto my card base. So another really simple card to put together. I think I made, like I said, 15 cards in about five and a half hours. So I've been working with the Spellbinders kits for, I think, four months now, and I will say that this kit was my fastest to put together and I did kind of have an idea for each of my cards so I did sit and plan out each card. I put all the ephemera pieces into groups and kind of just figured out layouts with them. So moving on to card number four, I'm going to start this card off by gold heat embossing a sentiment from the stamp set. I chose You Are Amazing. So I'll just heat set that sentiment and then I'll take my scissors and trim it out. And the gold embossing powder that I'm using is by Hero Arts. I really love this powder. I think I got it in a kit last year and it lasted me a good year. It's pretty much the only gold embossing powder I use. So I'm just going to flag the end of that sentiment and then I'll work on my card panel. So I cut out this pattern paper with the floral domes on it. I cut it to four by five and a quarter inches and then I cut it in half to create these triangles. And I also trimmed off about an eighth of an inch from each triangle so that I was left with a gap in the center of this panel. And I will have all the measurements on my blog post. This is a card layout I found on Pinterest. And then I'm also going to mat another piece of pattern paper onto another lilac panel. These are both cut to squares. And this card is definitely a Christy Marcotte inspired card. She loves to do mats and card layouts. I don't normally use them, but if I'm stuck on ideas, I will go on Pinterest for some card layout inspiration. I'm going to tuck a floral ephemera piece underneath this sticker. And actually this is not a sticker, it is the other ephemera piece that I used from the last card. I just added that grateful sticker on top. And I did pop up that dome and I'm going to tuck in a few leaves underneath towards the left to kind of balance that flower on the right. I also glue down my sentiment towards the bottom left, and then I'm going to just finish this card with a few of the pink gems that came in the kit. And then I will just adhere that onto my card base, and that will complete card number four. And I really like how this card turned out. I love that the pattern paper matched the ephemera piece that I used. For card five, I'm taking a memory box die from my stash, and this die just cuts out a bunch of skinny rings. I did die cut that from some gold card stock, and I'm sorry about the tripod set up here. You can see the legs of my tripod. I did get a new one, so I'm kind of trying to figure out the angle 
So hopefully in future videos you won't see as much of the legs. I don't know if I can completely get rid of them. This particular tripod doesn't extend as far out as my last one did, but it's a little bit more sturdy, so I think I'm just going to keep it. You can see that I'm taking some of the ephemera pieces and a pattern paper. I cut down to four by five and a quarter inches. I thought that it was just too much purple and the flowers weren't standing out enough, so I'm going to add a strip of scrap paper to the bottom of this panel. And you can see I'm taking my gold rings and I'm just adding them to the background. It kind of just adds a little bit more interest. For that last circle, I will just trim off the rest of that. And then I'll add some ATG tape to this pattern paper and trim off the excess. So I'm going to arrange these roses around this tag here. And I like how that looks, so I'm going to attach my tag with my art glitter glue. And then for the two pink roses, I'm going to just glue them flat and then that larger um, purplish flower I'll pop up. Here I'm trying to figure out if I want to add any more rings, but I kind of like how that looks. I will use the rest of the rings later on in this video. I felt that my tag needed a bow, so I'm taking some white ribbon from my stash and I'm tying a little bow and then I'll just attach that to the top of the tag. And then just to finish off this card, I'm going to add a gold gem to the center of that bow. I seem to always do this with my bows. And I love the color scheme of this kit. I'm not much of a purple fan, but I think that these just turned out super pretty. So I'm just going to adhere that panel onto my card base and that will complete card number five, I think. Hopefully I'm not losing track. Here's a close up. For card six, I'm going to take that large floral square stamp from the stamp set and I'm going to ink it up with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. You can see that I'm not getting a good impression for the bottom rows cluster. It's just not stamping. Here I'm like actually standing up and it just won't stamp. So I kind of gave up on it. I think I tried like two more times and I just acknowledged that it just wasn't going to stamp. So um, the Spellbinder stamp sets use acrylic, I think. They don't use photopolymer, so that could be the reason it didn't stamp out nicely, but it wasn't a huge deal. I don't even know if I pointed it out, if you guys would have noticed it or not, but I will say that it did not stamp perfectly. But that was okay, I still liked how it looked, so I'm going to fussy cut that out. You see that I did stamp it onto some gray cardstock, and then I also went ahead and stamped out the sentiment in the center of that stamp. And then I'm going to take some pattern papers and this butterfly pattern paper, I'm going to fussy cut a few butterflies from it. And I love that pattern paper on the background, but I felt that it was too distracting, so I'm going to, like I did earlier, take some vellum to help mute down that background a bit. But first, I'm just going to trim out the rest of my butterflies. I chose the black and white butterflies, since you can see I'm doing a black and white card here. And they were pretty easy to fussy cut out. So here's my last one. And this is where I realized that it's just, the butterflies aren't standing out on that busy background. So here I'm taking a scrap of vellum that kind of was the perfect size for this card. And I just added that right in the center. And here you can see the butterflies stand out much better here. Okay, and then I wanted to add just a little bit of shine. So I took some silver cardstock strips and I'll tuck those behind this pattern paper strip. And the silver cardstock did come in the kit. You got a silver and a gold this month. I'll pop up this strip with some foam tape and just adhere that right over my vellum trim off the excess and then I'm going to attach my sentiment 
I will also pop up the sentiment with some foam tape. Just add that to, towards the right of that strip. And then I'll attach my butterflies. I'm only adding glue to the center of their bodies. That way their wings can kind of pop up a bit. And then again, I'm going to flip the vellum over, only add glue behind the areas with, um, I guess, die cut images on them so that I can hide the glue. And now I'm taking some Trinity Stamps Pearls. If you've been watching my channel lately, I've been obsessed with these. I like to add them on almost all my cards now. So I'm just going to add a few of those to this card. And I really think that the pearls helped bring a really elegant touch to this card. So I'll just attach those with my art glitter glue. And then I'm going to mat it onto some black cardstock that came in the kit. And I love black mats. I really feel that they make your panel pop. So once that's added, I'm just going to adhere that onto my A2 card base. And that will complete card number six. I think this one is probably one of my favorites. I won't say that it is my favorite, but I love black and white cards. So here's a close up. Card seven is a very similar layout from my last card. The only difference here is that I'm going to use this friend sticker instead of the stamped image. So I'm going to layer a ephemera flower behind this friend sticker. I did add some glue behind it just to make sure that it stuck down. And I did cut this beautiful pattern paper to four by five and a quarter inches. The pattern paper in this kit were so beautiful that you really don't have to go overboard with your cards to make beautiful cards. So I didn't add as much detail into them as I normally do. And I think that's why I made so many in such a short amount of time. I would say that each card probably took me 15 minutes to make, maybe 25 for the longer ones. But this one was really quick to put together. I just added some fussy cut butterflies, which I cut from that same pattern paper that I did from the last card. And then to finish this card off, I'm just going to add a few gold, sequ uh, not sequins, gems. And I love how this one turned out. I just love the pattern paper. And then I just attach that to my card base. I'm going to pop up the butterfly wings a little bit more and that will complete card number seven. Okay, for card eight, I thought it was a little bit strange that there was a cheetah print and a zebra ephemera, but I decided to embrace it and combine the two. So I am using another card layout here. So again, the measurements will be over on my coordinating blog. So you can see that I'm using two pattern papers and I just layered them together. And now I'm taking the zebra and another sentiment from the ephemera pack just trying to figure out placement. And I like how that looks, so I'm going to pop up the zebra and the sentiment with foam tape. I'm going to mat this cheetah panel onto a black mat. And then I'll just attach that to my card base and another really quick card to put together. I'll just finish this card off with a few more gold gems. And that will complete card number eight. I did make two of these. I just forgot to add the gems to the other one, but I do later on add those. So here's a close up. For card nine, I decided to use the die cut card that came in the die cut pack. I will be making two cards here, so you can see I'll assemble two cards at once. I'm going, I cut the base of the car from some white cardstock and I'm going to layer some gold behind it. And then I'll just assemble my car. I'm going to add the black tires and then the silver rims I cut from the silver cardstock from the kit. You can see I'm bringing in that guide that shows you how to assemble the card. So I'm going to use that as reference because there were a bunch of teeny tiny little parts to this car. So it was nice to have that guide 
included in the kit and one of those comes in every kit so I often use it for detailed die cuts like this. So I'm just going to add the headlight and the bumper, I think. And that will pretty much complete the car. Nope, I got one more piece at the end here. <laughs> okay, and you can see off camera, I kind of created a collage with the traveling ephemera pieces. So I have a map, I have the definition of travel and carpe diem. And then here I'm taking one of the gold rings I die cut out earlier and I'm going to attach it onto this sentiment and it's just going to help the sentiment stand out a bit more. And that sentiment says, you make the world amazing. So I like how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and glue everything down. You can see I also added a geo point to the map in the back. And I also added a black ticket and a gold heart. I love creating collages with the Spellbinders kits. And I think this would be a gorgeous scrapbook layout um, for a traveling type of layout. So I just added my card to the bottom right corner and that will complete my panel. So I'm just going to attach that onto my card base. And that will complete card number nine. I think this one is my favorite. I love the black, white, and gold combination. So for card 10, I die cut that car again and assembled it off camera. And I also assembled the balloons that came in the kit. I cut the balloons from pink cardstock and matted them behind some white cardstock. And I just freehand cut some strings for my balloons. I wasn't sure if the die cut pack included balloon strings, but if it did, I don't think I got them, but maybe not. I'm not sure, but I just went ahead and cut strips of cardstock for my balloon strings. And then I'll just attach the love balloons behind my car. And I think it's really cute that it looks like balloons are attached to the trunk of the car. And at first I was going to use this gold pattern paper, but I really wanted some more blue in the card. So I'm taking this geometric blue pattern paper and I'm going to try to figure out what to do with it because I liked that pattern paper a little bit more. So I trimmed it down trying to see if I want to use gold, but I felt that silver looked better with the blue. So you'll see I swap the gold for silver. I trimmed that pattern paper down a little bit more because it was a bit distracting. So I wanted a little bit less of it so that my car stood out more. And I like how that looks, so I'm going to attach it onto my card base. I adhere the pattern paper to the center and then I add the silver strip across the center of the pattern paper. And then I'll go ahead and attach my car and my balloons on top of the silver. And then I die cut the moment die word dies from some white cardstock. And I will attach that towards the right of my balloons. And if I were to do this card again, I think I would die cut the moment from black cardstock. I think it would stand out a little bit better. But I do like how this card turned out. Again, really simple to put together. Okay, for card 11, I do have a bonus card here, and I decided to leave this portion in. I end up scrapping this idea, but I decided to keep it in the video. I normally cut things out like this since the videos are already long, but I just wanted to show you guys that even I like have an idea in my head, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. It doesn't work. In this case, I just didn't like the colors. I really wanted to use these purple butterflies in this purple pattern paper, and I thought the gray and the black would complement the butterflies, but I just wasn't a fan of the white heat embossing, and I wasn't a fan of the stark black sentiment. So you'll see that I end up changing this up. I'm trying to work with it. I do add some of these glitter berries 
and you get a whole pack of these berries and gold leaves so I wanted to use them I hadn't used them yet so I'm going to tuck them behind my sentiment panel and it was at this point I decided I didn't like the gray and white heat embossing so I'm going to do white and gold and the gold was perfect I liked how this looked much better it complemented the gold glitter berries so I'll just heat set that and I am creating two cards that's why you see me embossing two of these so I'll just fussy cut that stamped image and I just felt like the white and the gold was much brighter and it complemented the card a little bit better. I did try to use that You're Pretty Amazing black sentiment again, but I still didn't like the stark black. So instead, I took a ephemera sentiment circle piece and attached that to the center. And that purple matched perfectly with the pattern paper, so I liked how that looked. I'm going to add foam tape behind that gold heat embossed floral panel. And I also added foam tape behind my circle sentiment. I attach the gold glitter berries with art glitter glue and I'm also attaching the butterflies bodies with art glitter glue again so that their wings pop up. I decided to mat this onto some dark purple cardstock and also some black cardstock and then I just attach that to my card base. And I thought I would add some gems but I thought that the glitter was enough so I left it and here I'm just showing you this is the same card but in a square format I felt that I needed a little bit more to the right of the card so I did tuck in a floral ephemera piece and here you can see I just added a bunch more glitter leaves and berries but it's basically the exact same layout but it's still different and that's what I love about the Spellbinders kits. You can create very similar cards. You can create the exact same card twice um, and just create some really fast, quick cards. And it's nice not to have to color or die cut anything. Everything is just already there and ready to be used. The elements are so gorgeous on their own that you really don't have to think too hard about making cards and you can create so many. I feel that the value of the kit comes from how many cards you can make from it. I think I can easily create 25 cards with each of the Spellbinders kits. So that would probably come out to less than $1.50 a card. So I definitely feel like the Spellbinders kits are well worth the money. And I will continue to subscribe to them. I might skip a few kits here and there depending on how busy I am but I do think I will be doing a video for next month's kit, hopefully, or this month's kit, sorry. Hopefully I'll have that one out on time this time, but I did want to show you the January kit in case you haven't opened it yet, because I am very guilty of letting my kits sit around a little bit too long before opening them. So I hope I was able to give you guys some inspiration. I'm just showing you all 15 cards that I created today. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section and I will be sure to answer you as quick as I can. If you want some measurement details, some more close-up photos, you can head over to my coordinating blog. And if you haven't yet already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I do post pretty frequently now that I'm on some design teams and I would love if you guys would join my subscriber family. I have been getting a lot more subscribers lately and I just want to welcome everyone who has recently joined. And again, thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!